coffee is associated with a reduced all-cause mortality risk. And that's what we'll see here. This is a meta-analysis of 21 studies that included more than 10 million people. On the y-axis, we've got the relative risk of all-cause mortality, in other words, risk of death for all causes, plotted against coffee consumption in cups per day on the x. In terms of what's significant, we put up a red line at a hazard ratio of 1, and then we can see that lowest all-cause mortality risk was associated with 2.5 cups of coffee consumed per day. And that's because it's 95% confidence interval, those are the dashed black lines, are completely below a hazard ratio of 1. But also note that coffee drinkers have a significantly reduced all-cause mortality risk for all intakes of coffee, as shown by the upper bound for the 95% confidence interval being completely below that hazard ratio of 1 for all coffee intakes. And that's when compared against non-coffee drinkers. All right, so when considering these data, could coffee be associated with a younger biological age? And that's what we'll see in this recently published study that included more than 13,000 people. And jumping right into the data, on the y-axis, we've got the odds ratio of phenoage acceleration. So first, phenoage is exactly the test that I've posted many times on this channel. This is Dr. Morgan Levine's phenoage calculator, calculator using those nine blood test biomarkers. So what is the phenoage acceleration? So that means having an older biological age relative to your chronological age. So on the y-axis, we've got the odds ratio of having an older biological age relative to chronological age. And that's plotted against coffee consumption in cups per day on the x. Once again, in terms of what's significant, we put up that red line now at the odds ratio of 1. And first, we can see that for people who drank more than five cups of coffee per day, this was not associated with phenoage acceleration, again, having an older biological age relative to the chronological, as that shaded red region completely overlaps with the odds ratio of 1. The lowest odds for having phenoage acceleration was associated with four cups of coffee per day. And then for people who reported drinking less than three cups per day, that was associated with the highest odds for phenoage acceleration. In other words, having a higher biological age relative to chronological age, as shown by the increasing uh, red lines as shown there, such that people who reported no coffee intake had about an 80% higher odds of having an older biological age relative to their chronological age. All right, so from this study, we can see coffee's potential role. Uh, they shouldn't have been so sure in the title, but it's, their, it's the potential role. These are associations. This isn't a randomized controlled trial that explored the causative role of coffee on being able to reduce uh, Dr. Morgan Levine's phenoage as a metric of biological age. So coffee's potential role in slowing down biological age. But is this just healthy user bias? So to potentially account for that, in this study, this model was adjusted for standard variables that could impact the association for phenoage acceleration with coffee consumption, as, as shown here, age, gender, BMI, and so on down the list. Now, the ones, or some of the ones that I care most about are, are diet and physical activity. Are, are, that would really account for healthy user bias. Do they have a healthier diet, and are they just more active? So this study included those, those adjustments, including adjustment for, for total energy intake or calorie intake, the healthy eating index 2015, so whether they had a relatively high diet quality versus not, and then they adjusted for physical activity. But if there's a weakness in what they included in this model, it's that they adjusted for general health. In my opinion, they could have been more specific, adjusting for physician-diagnosed uh, diseases, such as cardiovascular disease, kidney disease, liver disease, and so on down the list, because reverse causation could be involved in the less than three cups of coffee being associated with a, a greater odds of phenoage acceleration. In other words, do people who drink less coffee, uh, are they, uh, do they have comorbid, uh, pre-existing comorbid conditions? And reverse, uh, in the reverse of that, is that because they don't drink coffee? Now, again, these are just associations that speculation, but we'll have to wait for the randomized controlled trials to more directly investigate that question. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, including discount links for epigenetic testing, NED quantification, or microbiome composition, at-home metabolomics, at-home blood testing with SciFox Health, which includes ApoB, but also GrimAge, green tea, diet tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. 
We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Die Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.